Okay, this is part two of my critique of the uh, creation in the 21st century, the episode featuring Russ Miller called Facts vs. Darwin. I, I, I've I skipped out a whole bunch of this already because it was getting way too long with just the introduction, so I'm going to just jump right into it. He has introduced Russ Miller, and now they are discussing the history of evolution in school. Via the public school system. Yeah, cool whip. Via the public school system. And unfortunately, and most folks don't realize this, it was John Dewey who introduced what's called prog progressive education into the school systems, and yes. it now dominates public school teaching. Yeah, that same uh, progressive education system that's responsible for bringing the illiteracy rate in the United States down from 20% to less than 1%. Before I leave it, one more point about John Dewey. You notice on the uh, graphic that Russ Miller shows, there's a quote that says, solve the Christian problem via the public school system. Uh, by being in quotes and talking about John Dewey, we are meant to assume that that is something that John Dewey said. I'm going to let, I, I have looked into this extensively. John Dewey has never said that. Um, that's a fabrication. A, it's a complete fabrication. Now, he doesn't claim that John Dewey said that now. I'm not saying that he, he didn't specifically say that. But by having that quote underneath John Dewey's name, you, you, the audience understands that that was an actual quote, and it sounds like a horrible thing to say, and indeed it would have been if, if it were true. But it's not. Uh, if I recall correctly, there is a commandment, um, something about bearing false witness. I wanted today to go through some of the frauds in the textbooks that are used to fool folks into believing that Darwinism took place. Let's do it. Probably heard of Ernst Haeckel. Absolutely. He read Darwin's book in 1860, a year after it came out. Actually, Ernst Haeckel is historically known to a first read origin of species in 1864, five years after its publication, not one year. A minor point, just thought I'd throw that out there. And it changed his life. So he spent the rest of his life trying to prove Darwinian evolution were true. Sorry, I have to jump in. Uh, once again, that's incorrect. Uh, Ernst Haeckel, first, he, he, he did say that uh, Origin of Species was one of the most important books he ever read. However, Ernst Haeckel was never a Darwinist. He never accepted that natural selection, as Darwin proposed, was the primary driving force behind evolution. Him and a lot of people before him, including his mentor, uh, long believed in, uh, that other forces were at work, some kind of Lamarckism. Uh, that, that's what Haeckel embraced his entire, his entire professional career as a scientist. He accepted evolution, not Darwinism. They're very different concepts. But he ran into the same problem that Darwinists have today. He couldn't find any real evidence to back it up. So he did what evolutionists are famous for. He invented what some. what was that? He invented evidence. He invented some evidence. So guys, I want you all to keep that in mind, okay? Evolutionists, when we are faced with not having the evidence to support our claim, we tend to invent the evidence, we lie, we make it up, we create frauds. That's what we do to prove our point. Unlike the good Christian creationists out there, you know, who oh, well, never take somebody's words out of context, uh, never invent a quote from somebody that's completely imaginary, never take somebody's quote and change some words around or delete important critical words to make it say the exact opposite of what the person intended. Um, I want you to remember that last point. Remember that last point because that's going to come back and bite this guy on the ass. Okay, uh, You know, good creationists, you know, that never just, you know, that would display, you know, fake human footprints or a cowboy boot filled with plaster and pig bones. Um, Noah's Ark. Uh, who knows? What all those things that good creation, good Christians have never actually claimed that turned out to be a hoax, turned out to be frauds, proven to be frauds. Um, yeah, it's just us evolutionists that do that. And th there's a certain irony to well, Russ Miller, who I'll show in a bit with with his quotes, but specifically talking to a guy, uh, Carl Bau, who proudly proclaims himself Doctor Carl Bau, even though his doctorate is from a diploma mill. Um, he never earned a grad. He never earned an undergraduate. He never earned a degree. All of his degrees are from non-accredited 
pay for de- pay for degree institutions. They're never none of them were earned, like Kent Hovind, like Don Bat, and like a lot of these 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 asshats out there. So it, there's a certain something funny about a guy with who doesn't claim a degree talking to a guy who claims advanced scientific degrees, talking about how us evolutionists are a bunch of frauds. I don't know. Is there something about it that that I don't know. And that is practiced, unfortunately. Describe this for us, please. From left to right across the top are Haeckel's drawings. He, what he did was he took a human who was in the embryonic stage, and he made copies of that human with slight changes, and he labeled them fish, salamanders, chickens, etc. Now, that's absolute fraud. It's absolute fraud. And one of the reasons I embraced evolution in a, uh, in a point of my academic studies was this... Ernst Haeckel series of recapitulation from fish, salamander, turtle, chicken, rabbit, human. Well, what are the real facts, Russ? Well, the real facts are that this, and they call this the theory of recapitulation, that we go through our evolutionary stages in our mother's womb, are actual frauds. These are the actual photos right below. They don't look anything like his drawings. And what Haeckel had done was he took the human embryo and made copies. This is a total fraud. And yet, this is still taught in textbooks today. It is still taught in textbooks today and is absolute fraud. Okay, this is such an often repeated uh, creationist distortion. Um, It's repeated so much that I found even people, supporters of evolution, still believe the story to be true. And there is a little bit of truth in it. Uh, So I'm going to tell you uh, as brief as I can about it but I think it's important. So first of all I'm going to show this this is an, this is the embryos that are fa- that are cited all over the place. Uh, these are where are famously called Haeckel's embryos and almost always associated with the word fraud. Okay. Um, but this is what's funny. This is what this this is what these these every everybody from Jonathan Wells to to well, Russ Miller now. They all show that sequence of embryos, and then they talk about how he copied the embryos and he he he, he fraudulently drew them and invented things to make them look fake and all of this kind of stuff. Now that picture that I just showed. Now those embryos were they were tweaked a little bit. There have been um, in modern times, you know, that they were fudged a little here and there to look a little bit more. But the fact of the matter is, those embryos, the real ones, do look just like each other at certain stages. Um, now, Haeckel, Haeckel's point was a whole different point than evolution, than Darwin and evolution. Anyways, uh, hopefully I'll have time to get into that. But the point is, is that those, but when, sorry, those embryos, that drawing I showed, those are not the embryos that Haeckel is famous for having forged. Those are not Haeckel's famous fake embryos. Okay, those are Haeckel's real embryos. Okay, again, maybe they're fudged a little here and there, but they're not. They're not off by very much. Um, here are, I'm going to show you now, this is the embryo drawing that Haeckel got heat for when he, this is what people, like, in his day, condemned him for, these embryos. Okay, what you saw there was, the, was an embryo of a chicken, an embryo of a turtle, and the embryo of a rabbit. There was no human embryo involved in that picture. Um, and I'm going to try to explain that a little bit, exactly what happened. Okay, that that that's sort of the stage before his famous picture. Okay, um, so Haeckel believed that everything went through its evolutionary history in the womb. This was a con- this wasn't actually Haeckel's idea. Uh, it went back to von Baer uh, 50 years before Haeckel, um, earlier than that even. In fact, some of the drawings that are that are reproduced as Haeckel's embryos are actually von Baer's embryos, the same ones that he drew. Um, but the uh, the whole point of it is is that the he, he found in a chicken egg because you can take a shell off in a fertilized chicken egg and you can actually watch the little embryo grow. He found that in the first this, this could be done with 19th century tools. He found that soon afterwards the embryo aligned itself into this pole that looked a whole lot like an annelid worm. Um, you know, believing that annelid or primitive worms were the ancestor of all, the, you know, and so therefore vertebrates would go through a worm stage. And he saw, hey, here's evidence of it. Look at this chicken egg. That looks just like a worm. It's a tube with a tube going through the middle of it and a few segmented structures to it. 
as much as he could search, as he searched for it, he could not find that in other vertebrates. He couldn't find it in turtles, he couldn't find it in dogs, he couldn't find it in rabbits, he couldn't find it in, in other vertebrate... He couldn't find it in basically in a mammal or any in, in other things. He couldn't find that same thing. But the fact is that actually does exist. If he had, had the technology or the tools, he could have found a very similar phase in those. He didn't have that ability given the time. But he, since he knew it was positive to exist, he knew it had to exist... He did a very bad thing. He took his chicken embryo uh, print and he copied it and he made a couple little changes to it and copied it twice and he labeled it um, turtle and uh, rabbit or dog. Maybe it was a dog. Uh, anyway, he, he labeled it things that they weren't when they really were just the first one. He did that not in a science publication. He did that in a popular science publication. He did it sort of in a, you know, a book you know, it was called Anthropology. Anthropology. Um, he did it. It was immediately jumped on as people said, hey, I know that's the same picture. He pulled it out. He replaced it in the second edition with just one of the embryo drawings, the chicken, the real one, and said, this embryo looks very similar to the same phase in dogs and other, other vertebrates. Um, but the point is, that was the fraud that he got in trouble for. That's what he got sort of looked down on in his lifetime, that's the famous fraud. That one. Not this one. Okay? This one's real. That one was real. This one was the fake. No humans were involved in it. So that is where this guy is... All of these these people are pulling this stuff out of their ass when they're talking about Haeckel's embryos. Now, Haeckel's concept about recapitulation turned out to be completely wrong. Um, But again, it wasn't in support of Darwinism because Darwin was opposed to it. Well, in part. Actually, Darwin supported it a little bit himself, but separate from Darwin's Darwinian evolution. Let's put it that way. Um, Because it was Lamarckism, except for instead of Lamarckism was that animals during their lifetimes would accumulate changes that would be passed on to offspring. They believed in a form of Lamarckism where organisms in the embryonic stage could add to their development in the embryo stage, and so that's how things would evolve. So therefore, if you could study something's embryology, you could study its evolutionary history. Um, and that, that, But the point was is that that's when these changes occurred, according to Haeckel. And that turned out to be false. In fact, it was long before Haeckel, the idea had a lot of critics and was, hev- was heavily criticized as being an incorrect idea of, of how change occurs. Because remember, evolution, Darwin didn't invent evolution. Evolution was... A hundred years before Darwin, people talked about that species possibly change and mechanisms for that change lacked. And there were lots of proposed mechanisms. Lamarckism is one of them, and this recapitulation was another based on Lamarckism. Okay, um, but the point is, is that I hate it when they show it, it's it's a bait and switch. They show Haeckel's legitimate drawings, um, some of which have been unfortunately reused because they're they're not the best ones we have. But they've used that. So now, if you open up a textbook, it doesn't matter if it's got modern 2010 photographs of an embryo in it. You can go, oh, Haeckel's fraud. You see, you see, they're using if it, if you show an embryo in a book on evolution, you're perpetuating Haeckel's fraud by this logic that they're using, and it's it's it is such a bunch it is a bunch of bullshit. Um, it's been they misquote Richardson, who himself, by the way, was also accused of not fraud, but hey, Richardson, the guy who they famously quote, um, he 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 fudged a bunch of things the other direction a little bit, like he showed embryos turned around and stuff, so they really did they looked less like each other. Um, he wasn't accused of fraud for that, but it was it was certainly a, presenting a biased view in his his point. But his point still supported Darwin and evolution, by the way. Richardson is often quoted by creationists with the Haeckel thing as, you know, as if he was somehow proving evolution false when Richardson was an abs... He's a committed Darwinist. So anyway, sorry, that's that's my rant. I'm probably going to run out of time for the rest of this. We'll see um, what I have left.